G'day everyone and welcome to another Rural Flying Doc presentation. My name's Dr. Jerry Considine and today we're going to be talking about croup. Croup's also known as laryngotracheobronchitis. It's a viral inflammation of the upper airways and it's worse at night, often in colder temperatures. So it's usual to see in late autumn through to the winter months. And it can be most common in those kids above six months of age, up and through to six years of age. We'll now go through some of the clinical features of croup. It's uh, common to see a prodromal viral illness or chorizal symptoms, such as a runny nose, for two to three days beforehand. There'll be some fever, but it's usually not above 39 degrees. The child might be tolerating oral intake. It'll look like an urty and smell like an urty, except they'll have some loud inspiratory stride or um, breathing in, and the classic harsh, brassy, or often described a seal-like cough, which we'll hear some of now. <coughs> the differential diagnoses that must be considered include epiglottitis at the top. You need to have a high index of suspicion for this one because it's often life-threatening and it needs to be ruled out. It can be differentiated from croup by having a rapid onset. The child will be drooling or sitting up straight and they'll look much more sick and have a high fever. Your other differentials include inhaled foreign body. If the child presents with a cough after a, a few weeks or months, then you must uh, think about that. And also break, uh, bacterial tracheitis. When you're assessing croup, one of the main strategies is to stratify into mild, moderate or severe cases because this will directly impact on your management strategy of the child. I'll let you have a quick read through that. The main differential of mild through to severe croup though being the respiratory rate and work of breathing. Work of breathing, you're looking at intercostal and subcostal recessions as well as tracheal tug and nasal flaring. Interestingly, oxygen shouldn't be required in mild and moderate severe case, uh, mild to moderate cases, but in severe, if a child has hypoxemia, it's often a late sign, so they could be quite unwell. The risk factors that can predispose children to having croup uh, includes having a pre-existing narrowing of the airway, such as subglottic stenosis or Down syndrome. Previous admissions with severe croup are uh, a risk factor, as, as are premature and any problems during birth. Now on to management. The number one overarching rule is to avoid distressing the child any further. This might mean limiting your uh, physical exam and having the, parent, having the child sit on the parent's lap. It also means that you might defer doing nasal pharyngeal aspirate, chest x-ray, bloods, and usually an IV is not needed anyway. Oxygen masks and nasal specs can scare kids, so again, only if severe case is oxygen required. And allow the child to sit in the way that is most comfortable for them. Children are gonna sit to maximize their airway, so let them do what they wanna do. If you've got a mild to moderate case of croup, then Ready Pred or Prednisolone uh, is a well-known treatment to parents as it's available over the counter. But if you're in a hospital, a tertiary hospital, dexamethasone might be an option. And the dose for that is 0.15 milligrams per, ki uh, per kilo. If the child's well and the stridor's gone when they're resting, you can discharge them home with some follow-up Prednisolone. Obviously, if you're worried enough about a child, then you can observe them for longer and treat them as per severe if you're worried. And we'll go into the severe treatment now. So for a case that's severe, you can add in nebulized adrenaline, five mils of one in a thousand, and dexamethasone given parentally, so 0.6 per milligrams per kilo, IM or IV. It's prudent to consider transfer if one of the following. One, you have no improvement post the adrenaline nebulizer, or indeed the dexamethasone shot. If they've had more than two doses of adrenaline and still aren't Im uh, improving, or if there's any of those previous risk, risk factors present. You could also add in, if you're not comfortable at your current location, whether that be a country hospital or your GP clinic, then you should refer on. Follow-up's always important in a general practice setting. So the main strategy is to reassure parents, give them some doses of the prednisolone to take home with for the next few days, 
and also educate them about when to present. So we'd like them to come back if the stridor persists at rest, even without uh, the steroids. Antibiotics, of course, aren't going to be useful with a viral illness. And it's nice to tell the parents that cough suppressants and humidified air haven't been shown to have any effect on the course or severity of croup. However, humid air may indeed make the parents feel better that they're doing something. Which brings us to our practice points for croup. Number one is to rule out epiglottitis being a lethal differential diagnosis to croup. Limiting your physical examination and also management if appropriate to avoid further distressing the child. If a mild or moderate case of croup, then you can get away with oral steroids. But if it's a severe case, you might need to add in nebulized adrenaline, parental steroids and oxygen. You need to have a clear plan for the child on discharge and also when you'd like the parents to return if things are worse. Some of the references I use for this talk are listed below with a special mention to the Royal Children's Hospital guidelines on croup. Well, thanks for watching today and make sure you hit me up on Twitter at Rural Flying Doc or the website listed there if you have any particular cases you'd like a summary done on. Cheers.